can you beat Fallen Mode with no supports? At its core, it's a pretty simple question. You can't bring DJ, Commander, or Medic, sure, just use this Leto and win, it's not that hard. But to do this challenge, first you have to define what a support tower is. So what even counts as a support tower? The definition of support is something that gives assistance to or enables to function or act. Going by this definition, a support tower is anything that can assist your other damaging towers in any way. This easily fits the three obvious towers being DJ, Commander, and Medic. Actually, I lied to you about that definition. This definition also states gives assistance to, especially financially, to enable to function or act, which means that this also includes farm. Four towers are bands, but when you think of supports, you also have to think of stunning or slowing towers. Freezer, Cryo, Sledger, Jester, Toxic Gunner, and Electroshocker are good examples of this. So that's easy, right? Bring something like this, but wait, wait, wait. All I've mentioned are towers that are solely support, but the real correct way to do the challenge would be to ban all towers that can give assistance or enable my damaging towers in any way. There are plenty of towers whose jobs are not just support, a lot of towers are more of a hybrid between support and damage, with examples like Warden, Brawler, Merc, Base, or Cowboy. There are more towers too, Traffic and Summit Bear Traps, Ace Pilot Gives Hidden Detection, and Pyro Mills Defense, bringing the ban total up to 17 out of 41 towers banned. And now, we can do our solo fallen NST run. Wait, wait, NST no, no support tower? Alright, well it's not... Not NST, but it is NST, you, whatever, you get the idea. So let's start the run. Early on, I used Engineer, because it's the strongest tower in the game without any supports, so obviously it's a good choice. The sentries also can't get stunned, which is a nice added bonus. After my Engineer got placed down, I started using military bases as most of my defense. It's another tower that isn't really affected by supports, and is pretty strong with its good DPS as a railgun tank and the strong airstrike ability, which actually came in quite useful in wave 19, as I could basically just one-shot this fallen jester with two of them and not have to deal with it. I brought Mortar, because it's pretty much the best splash damage tower in the game, and also can't get stunned, which is another common theme with the other two towers in my loadout, being Pursuit and Ranger, both of which are just pretty strong DPS towers that can't get stunned. However, during this round, I noticed something, I'm just gonna play this five second clip and see if you realize what's going on. That might seem a bit strange, why did I leave mid round? It was not like I was gonna die to anything. But uh, it's cause I realized, um, Ranger gives you a range buff. I just, I, I don't know, I, when I was planning this I just completely forgot that that's a thing. So uh, that's one more tower added to the ban list, 18 out of 41 towers banned now. And I replaced it with gold mini and I ran it back, so. Yeah, that was uh, pretty stupid of me, I'm gonna be honest. I started getting a few pursuits down, however, enemies started to get actually decently far along the path, so I decided to max out my strongest DPS tower and engineer. After I did that, I decided to go for max military bases because their airstrike abilities would be very useful in wave 31, the wave with fallen jester and fallen seraphs. The Jester is an enemy that boosts the speed and health of its allies, such as the Fallen Seraph, which is another problematic enemy that is a flying enemy, which means it can't be detected by most units, and with the speed buff, it's actually pretty fast. So fast, in fact, that mortars just, they just miss, they can't hit it. Um, and I knew this would be an issue, so I wanted to get at least a few max level airstrikes up just to be able to kill any Fallen Seraphs that managed to get Jester boosted and, uh, you know, dodge all my mortar shots. And you know what? I'm glad I did that. On the next wave, a fallen tank pushed a little bit further than I would have liked, so I decided to just max all my engineers so I wouldn't have any problems like that again. The wave 35 fallen honor guard was not too much of a problem, and I maxed all my engineers the next wave. After that, I decided to go with mortars because there's a lot of spam towards the end of fallen. And then finally, maxed a bunch of pursuits before minigunners because one, they have more range, so I would need to micro them less, and two, they cannot get stunned, so it would just be a more reliable DP. Well, I guess pursuit isn't very reliable, but you get the point.
I maxed my pursuits at the very end of wave 39 and started working on minigunners as the Fallen King spawned. So the answer is yes, you can beat Fallen with absolutely zero support towers. 